Hello, my name is William Yang. Today, we'll tell you about our latest work on Huntington Interactome Network in the brain. Huntington is a gene mutated in Huntington's disease, a devastating neurodegenerative disorder characterized by age-dependent loss of the striatal and cortical neurons. It's still unclear how the mutant protein causes the disease. One potentially fruitful way to study such a question is to identify protein that can bind to Huntington in the brain particularly from relevant brain regions and disease stages. In our study, we profiled Huntington interacting protein from a different brain regions and ages in the back transgenic mouse model expressing intact human Huntington. We immunoprecipitated full-length Huntington from the cortex, striatum, and cerebellum of two and 12-month-old back, HD, and wild-type mouse brains, ages representing the pre- and post-symptomatic stages in our model. Control experiments were also performed using the same brain tissues but without the Huntington antibody. The Huntington immunoprecipitated proteins were separated via SDS page and then each gel lane was cut into 24 slices. An in-gel digest was performed and the extracted peptides were analyzed by LC tandem mass spectrometry. In total, we identified 747 high-scoring candidate Huntington interacting proteins from the brain. Bioinformatic analyses support the relevancy of our protein candidates to Huntington's disease. For example, using ingenuity pathway analyses, we found the second most enriched IPA pathway in our interactome to be Huntington's disease signaling, suggesting our data set is highly enriched with genes previously implicated in the disease. In a large-scale in vivo proteomic interactome studies such as ours, we're facing the challenge of studying hundreds of potentially very interesting proteins. Instead of picking a few favorite proteins to study, a key motivation of this work is to obtain system-level analysis of the entire proteomic interactome database to enable uh, us to have an unbiased ranking of the Huntington interactors and to obtain a global view of the Huntington protein networks in the brain. We took advantage of the following two features in our proteomic data set. First, the unique mass spec peptide count for a given protein is a semi-quantitative measure of relative protein abundance in our samples. Second, our experimental design allow immunoprecipitation of different amount of Huntington in back HD and wild type samples, creating a consistent variation of peaks and troughs of relative Huntington abundance across 30 different samples. We reason that the proteins that are tightly complex with Huntington in our different sample conditions should also have similar peaks and troughs in terms of their relative protein abundance compared to Huntington. That is, they are correlated with Huntington in our data set. Our collaborators, Steve Horvath and Giovanni Coppola, calculate pairwise correlations of Huntington with 747 candidate interactors. These correlation with Huntington allowed us to rank order these proteins. We know the ranking is likely to be biologically meaningful since we can bin our proteins based on Huntington correlation and the top two beings of 125 proteins each are highly enriched with HD signaling in ingenuity pathway analysis, while the bottom ones are much less or not enriched at all. A major advance of our current study is the construction of Huntington interacting protein modules using weighted correlation network analysis, or WGCNA. To construct a correlation network for Huntington interactors, we used unique peptide counts for each protein across all 30 different IP experiments as inputs. The WGCNA program first computes the pairwise correlation coefficients between the proteins. Next, the correlation matrix is transformed into a weighted network using a soft thresholding approach. Finally, modules of highly correlated proteins are defined as clusters of highly interconnected proteins. To determine interconnectedness, we used a measure called topological overlap. To illustrate the concept of topological overlap, we will use the authors of our paper. William and Joe are pairwise correlated because they are both professors at UCLA. Since they co-train both Dinah and myself as grad students, their correlation strength is stronger, hence they would have a higher topological overlap. Similar connection strength can be calculated for our other collaborators, and then one can quickly identify clusters or modules of co-authors working either on Huntington proteomics, WGCNA, and validation studies. Our WGCNA analysis yielded six interesting Huntington-correlated protein modules, with Huntington itself residing in the so-called red module. The six Huntington correlated modules appear to contain proteins with different function and highlight different aspects of Huntington biology. 
The Huntington containing red module is enriched with chaperones, 14-3-3 proteins, and the microtubule-based transport proteins. The yellow module is enriched with postsynaptic proteins, blue module with presynaptic proteins, and the green module is enriched with protein actin cytoskeleton function. The pink cerebellar module enriched with protein in mitochondria function and calcium signaling. And finally, the age-dependent cyan module is enriched with proteins in mitochondria function. Importantly, working closely with our collaborators, Juan Botas and his colleagues at Baylor, we were able to validate about a dozen Huntington module proteins as the physical interactors or and or genetic modifiers of mutant Huntington toxicity in the FLY model. We hope you enjoyed our video summary. We believe our study may provide a valuable resource for the HD field. I think it may also help the scientists to generate new ideas to study normal Huntington function and to identify novel HD therapeutic targets. Moreover, our novel systems biology approach should be useful to build other important protein networks in the mammalian brain.